Robin says, my program has a lot of focus on strict exercises, for example, pull-ups, toes to bar. As soon as I get a strict pull-up, will I then start working on kipping? Which links to a more broad question of strength versus skill. Should I be doing extra skill work on my own, e.g. practicing, kipping, handstands, etc., or will these be incorporated as I develop my strength? Okay, we can, we can very broadly categorize the reason for not being able to do an exercise into something that's trainable or something that's practicable. So if you can't do a kipping pull-up, is it because you don't have the strength to do a kipping pull-up? Or is it because you don't have the skill to do a kipping pull-up? Or is it a little bit of both? Now, things that we can train, this is lifting heavy weights, doing high repetitions, working close to your anaerobic threshold. These are trainable qualities. Trainable qualities take a long time to develop because you have to layer abilities on top of each other. You have to have this cycle of stimulus, response, and recovery, which you cycle through, and that's how improvement happens. But this process takes a long time, and you do get consistent marginal gains, but they do come in the medium to long term. Whereas things that you can practice, on the other hand, can be improved very quickly. You can take someone from not being able to do a single double under to being able to string together 10 in the space of half an hour. Effectively, let's say they can do one double under, you've taken them to 10, it's a 1,000% improvement. You're not gonna get a 1,000% improvement in someone's back squat in half an hour worth of work. So trainable versus practicable. So in the example that we're talking about here, what we're working on with this athlete is making sure that we are spending the time on the trainable elements, those things that take a lot of time to develop. We can't fast track the training. Yes, we can get it happening as efficiently and as effectively as possible, but it's very hard to fast track that training. It takes time. We can, to a greater degree, fast track skill development. So we have to ask ourselves, what is the most limiting factor for this athlete for this movement? Because it's gonna be multiple things. It's not gonna be just the strength. It's not gonna be just the skill of the kit. But which one is most important? Which one is the lowest hanging fruit? Which one needs improving the most to be able to achieve this skill? So for this athlete in the pull-ups, for Robin, the limiting factor here is her strength, which again is a trainable quality, not a practicable quality. So we need to devote more of our time to improving her pull-up strength. Then once we have that, we can then work the skill, which is much more of a fast trackable ability. And yes, it will take years of refinement, but we can go from zero to 80% in this skill very quickly. The, ne the next 20% may take a lot longer, as opposed, to, as opposed to training, where it takes a long time to get that first 20%. You can see it's switched around. So we need to work on both, but for this athlete, we need to spend more time on the limiting factor. So let's say, let's pick numbers out of the air. Let's say that with this athlete, 70% of their inability to do a pull-up comes from strength. 30% of, of their inability to do a pull-up comes from their, their inability to do an effective skill-based gymnastics kit. We should therefore spend 70% of our time, energy, effort, resources, recovery capacity working on the strength, 30% working on the skill on the kipping. This can give us a basic idea of how to prescribe to correct movement based on the limiting factor and what is actually stopping that person from achieving that skill. In terms of extra practice, extra unstructured practice work, absolutely, have a play with the movements, but keep this unstruct un unstructured. If you're too structured in this, you tend to start to fatigue some of your willpower, other elements of your training start to fall away. So have a play with it, but don't set up a new structured system. Um, again, don't try and focus on too much at one time. Know what's gonna give you the most bang for your buck, what's gonna give you the greatest return on your investment, know what the lowest hanging fruit is, know what the minimum effective dose is, and focus on those things. Focus on the 20% of things that are gonna give 80% of the benefit. Instead of trying to look big picture and focusing on 80% of the things, which are only gonna give 20% of the benefit. The lowest hanging fruit here for you, Robin, is working on that strength. Then we can layer and build your, your skill, your stamina on top of this. Don't have too many focuses. Have 
less than three things you're working on at any one time, but work on them hard and be very deliberate in your practice of these. There is room for non-deliberate practice, for play, and do this, but don't structure it, keep it fresh.